viruses and every year we get the flu shot. I imagine that. I don't know. I imagine that we still don't know a lot of states, what, since uh, maybe December? Or with, so it'll, I, the, these are all questions that I imagine might be still open-ended even for Dr. Fauci. I mean, he's an amazing doctor, but he's not a psychic. And I know that our medical professionals are all probably wondering the same things and waiting for data, waiting for scientific proof as to what has happened. I know that they tested the vaccines on people, so I'm curious about have, the test groups. If you have a weak immune system, is it safe to get a vaccine? I'm asking about the immune system Does this system vaccine too. cover new strands? Uh, from what I know, it does cover several of those new strains. I will ask him again. I also am curious about whether or not the strains are more lethal or if they uh, have a different time between the time that you acquire the disease and you get and the onset of the symptoms. So uh, I'm curious. And by the way, uh, you know, virus, and this I know, it's not Dr. Estefan talking, I'm passing on information. I know for a fact that viruses mutate. They're living creatures that don't like to come under attack either. So they want to stay alive just as much as we do. And depending on whose body they get into and that person's immune system, the person can create create the new strain within themselves. It's not just like you get it from somewhere else. We actually create these new strains. And probably, I was hearing Dr. Fauci earlier uh, um, talking about that sometimes people that don't have a lot of immunity um, from the time they get COVID could create new strains in their body. So I will ask him about oh, that. This, this person chance. is on on your feet currently at Broadway Palm. Oh, hi, what's her name? Jasmine, Jasmine Sanchez, Jasmine you're in Sanchez. on your feet at in Fort Myers? It says at Broadway Palm. At Broadway Palm, oh my God, Such oh my, on show. your feet family that is out there. By the way, I have, a, I have a question for my on your feet family. Wait, go back, see if she'll answer. How are you doing the kissing scenes? You're all wearing face shields. Do you just eliminate the kissing or do you fake it like that if you're get together with the other person and do shield to shield? I was wondering that myself. Did Emilio when have any no. side effects from the vaccine? Emilio had no side effects. I had my, and again, I do not make any money from these product that I tell you people. But my friend, Dr. Eileen Marty, the infectious disease doctor, our personal guru here, part of my dirty dozen friends from high school, 12 of us, that have been having uh, weekly Zooms and usually centered around COVID questions to Eileen. And she told me that, especially for, he didn't have any, any side effects after the first one. She said, if you want to prevent uh, in the second shot, take some Theraflu prophylactically, like the day you take the uh, vaccine, the second one, and it worked for him. I don't know if it was the Theraflu or he just wasn't going to get side effects, but I rather err on the side of caution and prevent whatever I can. And also to take uh, an, you know, something to an hour before you get the vaccination for your arm, you know, like Tylenol or Advil or Motrin. I know you're not supposed to take ibuprofen when you have COVID, but for the vaccine, I imagine it's okay. And then to move your arm around a lot just to keep everything, you know, moving smoothly there. Uh, but yeah, Emilio was, he's a beast, Emilio. I, that man is... I've, I've never seen him sick. He's just he, so much energy. And even with the vaccines, he just kept going. He <laughs> went right to work. And maybe he keeps himself so busy that he doesn't even have time to think about any side effect he might be feeling and just blows through it. But no, he really didn't feel anything at all. He was a lucky guy. Dr. Fauci should be on some people, in three to five minutes. Oh, Dr. Fauci will be on in three to five minutes, people. Uh, they're keeping us posted Did here. Did your taste return to normal yes. after? Thank the Lord my taste returned. Uh, it took about ten, a week to 10 days for it to start coming back, but it was a process, absolutely a process. And now I think it's bad, you know, and, and my smell and everything, because I'm like a DEA dog, people. I can smell things so well. That's how I knew I had this bug, because I go, it can be nothing else, really. And uh, I was very lucky. I was very fortunate that my symptoms weren't terrible. Although I gotta tell you, uh, my cough went away completely uh, and then it came back a little bit. So, uh, and now it's gone again. So I heard that sometimes system come and go, uh, symptoms come and go, but you know, we just have to fight this as much as we can. And 
I know there's a lot of people out there and a lot of you that are concerned. Listen, everybody's concerned, all right? It's not like, and by the way, yes, the vaccine, they were able to develop it way faster than before, but we have a lot better technology. There was a lot of cooperation worldwide and there, we were in a pandemic. So there was absolutely reason to, to get out there and make it happen fast. I think because of the times we're living in, we were able to develop this vaccine sooner. But you know, people, of we're, course, we're concerned. We're ready. I would rather err on the side of caution, and we're gonna ask Dr. Fauci yeah. oh, so he can allay our fears. Wait, what happened here? Hold on, I just my assistant did something strange. No. Wait, no, no. Where's the other? One? Hold on. Where did Dr. Fauci go? I know. Oh, we're supposed to go to Dr. Fauci. Can you search Dr. Fauci on there? No, hold on. Let me tell him to request it. Yes, tell her to request one more time, please. Ooh, don't want to keep Dr. Fauci waiting. Would never want to. Um, yeah, it's, you were scrolling so many people so fast that, you know, we we lost when Dr. Fauci came in. Oh, there it is, White House. Is that it? Oh, Can you oh, see? No, but not in, hold on. Is it that the White House? Wait. Request the Wait, White House. Hold on. Hold on, people. We've got, we're trying to get this thing squared away. Go live in a room. Heather is having a bit of a snafu oh. here. No, it's just because all these requests are coming at the same time. Okay, people, uh, don't request to go live because we're get we're losing Dr. Fauci. His Red Sea now. Oh, there it is. View request. Okay, go. Here we go. Right. And where are we? Let's see. Oh, oh there we go. Dr. Fauci. Hi. Hi, Gloria. How are you, Dr. Fauci? I'm well, very well. A welcome. And first, let me say that thank you so much for um, being a shining light for us. And, you know, rather than going off and enjoying your life after such a storied career and, you know, and the dangers that were out there, thank you for sticking it out in, through very tough times, I imagine. And, uh, and being there for us, you've been a shining light and a beacon to all of us through this very dark time. And I want to thank you for that. You well, thank you. You have Thank a lot you. of fans, Dr. Fauci. Thank you. Thank and you for having me on the Instagram. Thank you for being here. And you know, I have 12 friends from high school. We get together every Wednesday on a Zoom. One of them is Dr. Eileen Marty, an infectious disease doctor. So we have been following both you and Dr. Marty's been keeping us schooled with down to charts and graphs and all kinds of things to make sure we understood. We have so many questions for her, but I have questions for you. I know you're busy, so I'm gonna get on with it. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. I was COVID positive November 8th. I tested negative the 22nd and 24th. So I wasn't eligible yet for the vaccine because of my age and they told me to wait three months. Why wait three months? Is it, is it because it's harmful or is it because we still have immunity and we didn't wanna waste the vaccine or any other reason? So Gloria, theoretically, the situation is that you're making um, uh, antibodies against the COVID proteins. The vaccine itself is the spike protein of the coronavirus. And the concern theoretically is that if you have a lot of level of antibody, it's gonna bind to the protein and diminish the effect of the potency of the vaccine. That's only a theoretical consideration. How long did they ask you to wait? They told me three months, but I know for a fact I still have immunity because I've gotten yeah. repeatedly tested. I, I would not wait any longer, uh, Gloria. I believe that the advantage of getting the boost from the vaccine far outweighs the theoretical possibility that your own existing immunity is going to interfere. And we know that the immunity that's induced by the vaccine in general is more potent than the immunity that's induced by infection. So my advice would be at your convenience when you wanna get vaccinated, get vaccinated. I'm absolutely gonna do it, Dr. Fauci. Yeah. And, and I have a friend that is going through it for the second time COVID because she didn't develop immunity the first time. So absolutely, I'm gonna do it. We had questions from our uh, viewers here. Can pregnant women 
get the vaccine and that especially that might be breastfeeding, maybe not pregnant anymore, but women that are breastfeeding, right. can they get the vaccine? Will it pass anything on to the baby? Okay, so the way the situation is with pregnant women is that the formal tests to determine the safety and the immunogenicity, in fact, have not been done. However, importantly, the situation after the EUA was granted to both the uh, mRNA vaccine of Moderna and of Pfizer, several thousands of women who were pregnant have gotten the vaccine. Many of them were healthcare providers who felt that the risk of getting COVID-19 from a patient was much more than any potential risk of the vaccine. So they got vaccinated. And with several thousand having got vaccinated, there are no red flags of any problems that have arisen. So even though we haven't formally tested it in a clinical trial way, the fact is pregnant women need to make a decision of whether they want to get vaccinated or not. The risk benefit clearly falls in the favor of the benefit as opposed to the risk. And that includes pregnant women, breastfeeding women, same thing. Great, that, that is very helpful. Um, I've heard a lot of women express concerns, young women express concerns about their fertility. And I know things get out there, the internet, everybody writes things. Do you see any concern for young women because of their fertility situation? Gloria, there's no biological reason whatsoever why they would have anything to do with fertility. It's a messenger RNA that doesn't interfere with any of your own genes, doesn't have anything to do with any of the other functions, and it gets degraded within a very short period of time. So biologically, there's no reason to believe that that's an issue. Beautiful. In Miami and Dade County, we've detected the UK variant, the New York and the Brazil variant. Does the infectious dose of the SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19, in humans differ by viral variant? Uh, I'm sorry, you just blocked out and froze for a second there, Gloria. So if you could repeat okay, the question. I got you. Absolutely. We've got all three variants in Miami-Dade County, the UK, New York, and Brazil. Does the infectious dose of the COVID-19 in humans differ by, by viral variant? Like, can, can you get more, you know, disease by the other variants? Well, one, there are a couple of aspects to it. For example, the 117, which is the one that started off in the UK, it is more infectious than the uh, standard wild type, which means that theoretically, but probably in reality also, if you get infected, the viral load in your nasal pharynx would be higher. We're starting to look at the two in California, which I believe you're, the one in California is the uh, 427, 429 variant. That one, we don't have as much information, but that looks like that also spreads more readily. So when you have a virus that spreads more readily, that means likely the viral load will be higher in the nasopharynx. What that ultimately means is unable to say. We know that the Brazilian isolate, the 351, not only is, spreads more readily, but it also evades some of the protection of monoclonal antibodies and diminishes the impact of the vaccine. So they're all really different, but it doesn't appear except for one that makes it more virulent. And that's the, the, uh, the 351. There's one in New York also. Yes. There's a 526 one that seems to be confined to New York. I don't believe that has yet gotten to California. It's gotten to Miami-Dade though. Cause it has, my, yeah. My friend, right. the infectious disease doctor said. So all you spring breakers out there, please be careful. If you have immunity, for example, such as I have, how, uh, what's the, what are the chances of me getting a different variant from the original COVID that I got, like reinfecting? That's a great question. And it depends a bit on your previous question. It depends on the variant involved. In the South African experience, people who were originally infected 
with the standard virus and recovered found that they did not have any protection against the 351 variant in South Africa. We have 351 right now in the United States, but it isn't particularly prevalent. But that's one example that even if you get infected and recover from that, the, 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 the variant can easily infect you again. And would the vaccine then give you more coverage than having had COVID? Because what does it cover? Does it, do we know yeah. yet if it covers all the variants? No, no, that's a great question, Gloria. The answer is we found in the South African study that people who were vaccinated were not completely protected against the variant, but it clearly protected them against severe disease, hospitalization, and death. Whereas the prior infection wasn't as good as vaccination in protecting you. So, so vaccine was better. So definitely good idea to get it just to protect, because let's say you get it, at least there won't be death and hospitalization if you were to get reinfected, which is a chance. So please, spring breakers, be careful out there. Uh, it's, it's rough at the moment, uh, you know, with all this, despite the vaccines. And I'm happy that we do have the vaccines. That's, that's really excellent. What would be your best pitch? Because as you know, there's many people that have lost their trust in many previously respected organizations because of mixed messages we've been receiving from our government, from medical experts, from so much chatter on the internet. What would be your best pitch to those on the fence about receiving the COVID-19 vaccine? Yeah, I think the best pitch is that if you look at the data about the safety and the efficacy, take a look at how it was established. It was established by clinical trials involving tens of thousands of people. Uh, Moderna trial, 30,000. Pfizer, 44,000. J&J, &J, 40,000. The important thing that people need to appreciate is that the decision as to whether or not it is safe and effective is not made by the federal government elected officials, not made by the pharmaceutical company. It's made by an independent data and safety monitoring board who is representative of the people, not of the companies or of the government. With all of the vaccines that have been approved thus far, the data and safety monitoring board came to an independent decision to say that the results look good. Then when the FDA approves it, they do it in a completely open, public, transparent process with their advisory board, which again is completely independent. So the message to people who have concerns is that the determination of whether it's safe and effective has been completely independent and transparent. And that's the reason why People like public officials, like myself, I publicly got vaccinated because I have very, very strong confidence that the process was a good process and that the vaccine is safe and effective. The president and the vice president did exactly the same thing. Thank you very much. You know, my father suffered from MS. Um, how do you think the vaccine would affect People suffering with autoimmune diseases like multiple sclerosis, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, graves, or inflammatory bowel disease. How do you, would you still recommend that they get this vaccine? Gloria, I would strongly recommend that they get it for the simple reason that people who have those autoimmune diseases are very likely on immunosuppressive drugs like corticosteroids, or some of the monoclonal antibodies that block immune response, which means that if they get the COVID-19 disease, they are more likely to have a serious outcome that would lead to hospitalization and possibly death. So even though the vaccine, because of their immunosuppression, may not be as robustly responsive in them, it still will give them some protection, but some protection